Verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. This is a portrait of the apostate church. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. I want to paint the picture of the Nigerian church for you. And help me confirm whether or not I'm lying. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Verse 3. Without natural affection. Gay marriage. All kinds of madness that goes on. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, going to church, wearing nice suits, having ushers and protocols standing, having a form having bibles in their homes having ipads and ipods and all kinds of things browsing through scripture having a form of godliness say but denying its power from such turn away verse 6 for of this sort they are those who creep into houses house prophets marching from house to house telling every house the problem they have in the world and leading captive silly women laden with sins led away with various lusts ever learning bible studies on sunday prayer meeting in the night self-fellowship on monday miracle service on tuesday deliverance service on wednesday word exposition and encounter on thursday standing on the rock on friday sitting in heavenly places on saturday ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth now as Janus and jambers withstood moses so this also resist the truth amazing that in the church of god the truth is resisted men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith but they shall proceed no further this is the judgment of god upon these ones for their folly shall be manifest unto all men and theirs also was he said but thou hast fully known my doctrine this is paul speaking my manner of life my purpose my faith my long suffering my charity my patience hallelujah 11 persecutions afflictions which came unto me in antioch and all of that verse 12 yea and all that will live godly in christ shall suffer persecution and then 13 but evil men and seducers shall become worse and worse deceiving and being deceived let's read that verse together verse 13 one to read but evil men and seducers shall become what? Worse and worse. Deceiving people and they themselves being deceived. But this is the encouragement to the true church. 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and thou hast been assured of knowing whom thou hast learned them. 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus 16 he said for all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable number one for doctrine number two for reproof number three for correction number four for instruction in righteousness that the man of God, the next verse, may be what? Perfect. 
The word perfect there is mature, thoroughly furnished. The purpose of scripture and the dealings of God with the saints is that he brings us to a point where we are mature. Established, grounded, built up in the knowledge of God. The apostate church is that church that subtly begins to deviate from the doctrines and the principles of Christ. The Bible says, ask for the ancient parts and walk ye therein. Unfortunately, what we call the ancient part is not what God calls the ancient part. Because what we call the ancient part is the traditions and religiosity of men and of denominations. That also is an error and is part of the trait of the apostate church. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me tonight? If you came here to be blessed, if you came here to know the Lord, if you came here to shake out the things that caused the great to fall, then welcome to this message tonight. You must be able to open your spirit to receive. For in receiving the word, it will cause you to be established in truth. Hallelujah. There are all kinds of apostasy in our church. Every kind of activity. The Bible makes us to understand that the next series that we are stepping into, we will be examining the book of Revelations. Hallelujah. We are going to be opening up the book of Revelations. The word revelation comes from a Latin word, revelatio. And the Greek is apocalypsis. That means the unveiling of that which has been previously hidden. Hallelujah. It was a revelation of Christ Jesus as revealed to John. A little Bible history about John. The Bible makes us to understand that persecution arose when certain Roman emperors began to strike against the church of Christ. And the first of them in Bible history is called Emperor Nero. He was a wicked and a hostile man. Hallelujah. Came to a point where they persecuted the church. To a point that there was a field like a football field. And they would parade believers and lose lions to chase them on account of their faith for the kingdom. Many were thrown into the den of lions. Many were dragged in carts. Hallelujah. It was during that time that Paul and Peter, Paul was about to be crucified. And Bible history tells us that Paul was about to be crucified the exact same way Jesus was crucified. And Paul said he was not worthy. He said they should turn him upside down. And they turned him upside down and crucified him. Hallelujah. And then, after Emperor Nero, one called Domitio, the next emperor, he came in and paraded himself to be God and to be Lord. To a point that he even banished his wife and persecuted his children. He wanted everybody to call him Lord and God. So when John, the beloved, the one who Jesus loved, when he began to preach about Christ in the city of Ephesus, he began to talk about the counsel of God. Talk about the mysteries of the kingdom. The divine life and the reality of the lordship of Christ. It was a real threat to the emperor. Hallelujah. And then they caught John and paraded the people. And they boiled hot oil and they threw John in it. Suddenly John entered the hot oil and nothing happened to him. He moved freely through that hot oil. And they were amazed. What manner, what dimension of the spirit, what knowledge of God did this man have? And as a result of that, he was banished to the island that we call Patmos. Revelation chapter 1. Help us, O oh God, to be the true church. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which he gave unto him, to show unto his servants the things which must surely come to pass. And he had sent and signified it by his angel unto the servant John, who bore witness of the word of God 
and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and all things that he saw and there is a blessing there for all those who read and obey the things that are written in revelations and John wrote to the seven churches I'm driving somewhere hallelujah now you must understand that the way the book of revelation was was um was broken it told him write the things that were the things that are and the things that shall happen after hallelujah the things that were was a revelation of all the things that had happened before the church age the things that are is a sum total of what we call the dispensation of the church age encapsulated prophetically in the seven letters that were written to the churches there were truly seven churches in asia minor all of the churches smyrna laodicea and all of pagamos all of those churches they were real churches that were planted by the apostles in asia but then prophetically every one of those churches was a representation and a type a dispensation of different ages in the church age are you following me now and so he began to write to the churches and you would hear the lord commend the churches i commend you over this and that and that however i have a problem hallelujah god had a burden because the church of christ although they were walking in grace although they were walking in power certain men began to come in orchestrated by satan himself and he, they began to be injected into the system they talked like apostles moved like prophets prophesied like great men but Paul said that these ones do not belong to us because their gospel and their message began to deviate the body of Christ. Are you following me now? This is one of the traits. There are many doctrines, hear me, that many circles and ministries in this country are imbibing, they teach it, they write books about it. These are erroneous doctrines that were sent from the pit of hell to deviate the focus of the church from the primary truth that it runs upon. Are you listening to me? One of those doctrines was addressed to the first church in Revelation chapter 2 and Paul called it the doctrine of the Laodicean. The Laodiceans were a kind and a group of people that introduced a kind of doctrine. Another was called the doctrine of Balaam. Different kinds of doctrines. And let me tell you something. The church of Christ needs rapid emergency attention. Otherwise, the way we are going to, the church of Christ has now become a psychological hospital where the power and the grace of god has been replaced by therapeutic psychological things so a brother can sleep with a lady and they say we need to examine the mental state and the kind of drugs and the the psychosomatic condition and all of the medical terms the apostate church we find justification for everything in the body one of the doctrines of the laodicean is where today we get the doctrine of what we know to be the doctrine of eternal salvation that once you are born again you can sleep in the name of jesus cheat in the name of jesus bribe in the name of jesus that whatever happens to your body does not affect your spirit your spirit is saved and many saints jump and we say hallelujah and many are queuing up and they will receive a rude shock when they find themselves in hell are you listening to me different kinds of gospels came one of it is called the doctrine of balaam there's no time but do you know balaam balaam was a prophet balaam was a true prophet Balak called him and said he should curse the nation of Israel. And he repeatedly wanted to make attempts, but the Lord stopped him. You know why? 
because the nation of israel were a sanctified and a holy people and the shout of the king was in the midst of them and he had a strategy in the book of numbers the bible begins to reveal to us some of the things that he did he caused the nation of israel to begin to fornicate and sleep with other people are you getting blessed tonight i came to challenge you tonight and then for the men of god in this country we have a special let me show you something jeremiah 23 i wish every pastor prophet bishop pope brother whatever that names the name of christ will sit and read this scripture are you ready let's read verse 1 then we'll jump to verse 9 jeremiah 23 verse 9 verse 1 and then we'll go to verse 9 are you there one to read whoa beyond to who stop who is speaking god is speaking through the prophet he said whoa be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of the pasture woe unto the pastors that means there are pastors there are men and women of god they own parishes they own churches you watch them on tv it says they destroy and they scatter the sheep verse 9 my heart within me is broken because of the prophets now you must understand when the bible talks of prophets in ancient time there were no apostles are you listening to me why because christ has not been risen one of the biblical proof of an apostle is that he must encounter jesus christ face to face so the apostolic ministry was also incorporated and so the prophets function both in the apostolic and the prophetic office they were the only ones who god could use to communicate his counsel to the people the priest barely mediated between the god and the people in terms of sacrifice so when he talks about prophets there don't smile and say i was sleeping and i saw evangelist under my name you belong to that category and it's important to listen he said my heart within me is broken because of the prophets all my bones shake i am like a drunken man and like a man whom with wine had overcome because of the lord and because of the words of his holiness this is the prophet speaking his reaction to the anger and the tenacity with which god was using to speak verse 10 for the land is full of adulterers for because of swearing the land mourneth, and pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up and their cause is evil and their force is not right it looks to me like nigeria for both prophet and priest are what profane both prophet and priest are profane yea in my house have i found their wickedness therefore their ways shall be unto them like slippery parts in the darkness they shall be driven on and fall into them for i will bring evil upon them even the year of their judgment said the lord 13 and i have seen falling the prophets of samaria they prophesied in baal look up they prophesy in the name of who so not everybody that looks at you and says you are pastor alpha and you say yes sir the bible says there are some prophets who prophesy and there are many of them in this country deceiving the sheep of god promising you all kinds of things I hope you are ready tonight i like the way god deals with you sometimes he doesn't tell you how he will come then you receive it down and it keeps you down let's hurry up i have also seen the prophets in jerusalem so he was listing prophets everywhere the men of god in zaria the ones in abuja 
the ones in Port Harcourt, the ones in Worry, then the legion of them in Lagos, they are here. The Bible is talking about them. He said, an horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen the hands of evildoers. There is no place like the church of Nigeria where we strengthen the hands of evildoers. Any Tom, Dick and Harry can go anywhere, loot from the national treasury, enter our place and buy a jeep for the pastor. Suddenly he becomes the Holy Spirit in the church. Directing the affairs of men. The Bible said they strengthen. A man comes and meets a man of God and says, uh, I'm about to embark on a trip or do something. Prophesy to me. Let me tell you something. Do you know because you have an unction from the Lord, you can speak over people and bless the works of their hands and it will prosper. But the Lord will hold you accountable because with that gift came discernment to glorify Christ alone. Hallelujah. He says that none doth return from his wickedness. And they are all of them like Sodom and its inhabitants like Gomorrah. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make their drink the water of God. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth in the land. 16. We we'll read to 19 and stop. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. I hope you understand the context now. It's talking about the false, I like the way Amplified puts it. It says the false prophets. He said, don't mind the nonsense they are talking about. Doesn't matter how flamboyant it sounds. He said, they make you vain. And they speak a vision in their own heart. And not out of the mouth of God. Everybody stands on stage. I was sleeping this morning and the Lord woke me up. And all, the Bible says they conceived that vision in their heart. Whose God is their belly? That vision was brewed from the hunger in their belly. And not from the voice of God. Verse 17. They say still to those who despise me. In other words, it shall be well with you. People who are obviously perverting truth. Because they drop prophets offering. They buy you a suit. They take you to Hawaii. And you say it shall be well. A man is stealing another man's wife. You know it. You are aware it shall be well. The apostate church. The Lord had said, you shall have peace. That's what they are saying. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of their heart, no evil shall come upon you. Is that not what a lot of people want? That's what we want. That's what we run to church for. Man of God, I came with a small offering. Then the man says, bless you. I see the Lord is showing me something. Oh, glory, glory, glory. And now you begin to jump. Let me tell you why I'm teaching you this. Because the Bible says, it didn't say they will diminish. They will keep increasing. And if the church of Christ is not built to be grounded, then there is trouble for us in Nigeria. 18. For who had stood in the counsel of the Lord and has perceived and heard his voice and had marked the word and heard it. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Verse 20. Let's read on. The anger of the Lord shall not return until I have executed, until he hath performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, ye shall consider it perfectly. Verse 21. Everybody read it together. One, two, read. Yet they ran. I have not spoken to them. Yet they prophesied. Is that in your Bible? Or you removed it this morning? He said, I have not sent them. Joshua Selma Ministries International. I was sent by Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah, all kinds of things. They say, my God and my king, he spoke to me this morning. He said, build me a people. 
and they are destroying the people he said i have not sent them yet they did what they are not even working boy there are ministries running in this country one year they have established 30 branches everybody is running the same deceit the same perversion and god's people get ensnared gullible because satan knows how to lure you he uses your lust and your needs to lure you into a trap if satan knows you don't like ladies he will not bring a woman to you what for it doesn't work like that he's smart enough to know that we respond to our needs hallelujah the apostate church some of you belong to these churches some of you have enjoyed the things that they do they have taught us a lot of error they have deceived a lot of God's people right now everything in the church of the living God is money money can do everything the front row is determined by how many money makers or partners your seed is equivalent to your faith let me with time i'll be showing you where these doctrines came from because god has been speaking to many of you and there are many of you that are just waiting to finish abu so that you establish that kind of ministry you have planned it you have calculated it you have seen that it's 1.5 that will be your own every month you have you have drafted it and so you are crying they say fast and pray you will get power you are praying right now not because you love god it's part of the tools to add to the apostate church and i'm speaking to great men and women there's a lot of deviation from the truth of god's word and many of us have seen it we love it so much we like a congregation that comes to massage our evil doings and the house of god has been turned into a place of entertainment nothing wrong with joy in his presence there is fullness of joy not fullness of foolishness and stupidity hallelujah there are all kinds of nonsense that happen in the church there are football fans that sit in church seats kept for them arsenal fans man you they give offering according to everything they shout hallelujah according to their what what is going on in the body of christ how come we don't have a voice that can rise to speak we laugh at these things and it's misleading us there are men and women in the body of Christ whose job is to match make the pastor's wife it is the one she sees and she says Sam you are the head of worship uh, Zuera you always smile every time Sam raises a song you must marry him any other thing is not the counsel of God now let me tell you something as you are laughing make sure the Holy Spirit is sinking this thing into your spirit because it's happening hallelujah we have all kinds of people the church of god has become a dome for people to look for contracts every tom dick and harry comes and tells the pastor he wants to sit down near this manager that comes and they say turn to your neighbor and say what do you do and the man of god let me tell you something judgment will come upon the house of god oh i assure you it will happen as surely as the lord lives that's why the church in this country has no voice politicians know where to run to for security they loot from the national treasury and know who to run to a prostitute comes to meet you you are praying for her you are seen in the spirit she's a prostitute why don't you call her in love and let her give her life to christ that will cost you what she's about to give you the prophetic seed The Bible tells us that a day will come listen to me 
I want you to know that a day will come. Jesus Christ is coming upon this earth and I don't know who has deceived you but I'm reversing that deceit tonight. There is something called judgment day. There are two kinds of judgment for your information. Let me balance the nonsense preachers have tried to preach. Number one, there is the judgment that he who has not given his life to Christ is already condemned. Those ones will not make heaven. But there is the judgment that will judge the works of men. Are you listening to me? So that one is among those who are already believers. The word judgment should not scare you. It's bringing into accountability. Matthew 25. Don't open it. There's no time. But I'm showing you that there is such a thing. And the Bible says to those found worthy in the age to come, they will be made to rule over kingdoms. Hallelujah. We have taught all men all kinds of things. You are the God of yourself. Bring out the giant within you. You are one with Christ. I like you to say I am Jesus. Everybody shouts I am Jesus. I like you to say I'm the Galilean. And they say I'm the Galilean. The doctrines that make the apostate church. Because this is exactly what Satan did in Ezekiel 28. He said, I will exalt myself above the stars of God. Every time you sing a song and you say, Lord, be magnified. A lot of people say, ah, you're a new creation. You should step into God. Push him, he'll push you. Even when you do something that requires true remorse to have a contrite and a broken heart. Say, there's no need feeling bad. Come on, walk up to that. Touch your, your, redemp your redemption or whatever you touch. And, and smile back. And so the leader of the choir is sleeping with every lady in the choir and touches his redemption back and smiles. Let me tell you something. There is judgment that is coming upon the house of God. Yes, there is. And it's going to come and it will start with we the men of God and it will spread down. Do you realize that one of the talent that was collected was collected from one of the servants, not an outcast. Many people's giftings, ministries, and many things will fade before you. You will see it come in the days to come. Many prophets will arise as before. Suddenly they will see that the heavens have been closed. For what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? And what communion has light got to do with darkness? Your writing exam, 100 level. Malpractice took you to 200 level. You say, glory, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What is your concept of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ? Can I tell you something? When a man of God stops preaching the things that he used to uphold he has started falling victim into that are you listening to me when a man of god cannot stand and preach holiness and righteousness the bible says who shall ascend to the hill of the lord he said he that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully he shall receive a blessing from the lord and righteousness from the God of salvation. We want things from God. We want prosperity. We want money. And so we have been taught that a shortcut to it is to tap into the anointing of the man of God's life. And so what happens? We just sit down. We don't do anything. Right now there are prophets in Abuja that collect what we call battle seed. You pay and they labor for you in the place of prayer while you go about becoming the apostate church. So they pray. You pay them on payrolls. The man of God has prayer band praying for him and is there traveling around the world as if he's a tourist. Drinking juice, changing every kind of thing, trying all kinds of wine. And then he comes, his suit is fixed. And he just flips through the scripture. Uh, let's look at Mark today. He just shouts. And for three hours of God's God-given time to his people. Stand there, waste people's time. 
You know how much I bought this suit? You people don't know. You are not yet in that level. And people laugh. Let me tell you something. It's time you begin to frown at some things. Are you listening to me? Because many of us, they have become mentors unto us. We love them. We admire them. Every time we see them, you imagine yourself marrying them. That imagination is certainly not from the cross of Christ. And there's need for radical re-editing. Many of us sit down and you already, listen, they teach we young people all kinds of things. Get rich quick. Do everything. Breakthrough can come for you in one week. I see my car. Look, I know what faith is. I'm not telling you that there is no place for faith. I teach about faith here, don't I? But I'm telling you there is a straight line between faith and foolishness. Are you listening to me? God sends the man to carry his tithe and go and sow. And he uses from the tithe and the remaining 20% he comes and explains everything to you. He says God is a merciful God. Just take this one and just use it and use malt and with this effort you are doing just use malt and wash your mouth and say, ah, ah, my son, my son you laugh over 